Oh, this is my VG30 conversion. I did this back in uh, late part of 91, January 92, when I was still working at the uh, Z car shop M&G. The engine's out of an 85 non-turbo with the five speed. And I'm probably one of the first. I don't know of anybody that's done this to a 720 truck before. The engine's mostly stock. I got it out of an 85 that was uh, rear-ended, and uh, at that time we had California Foreign, it was a good salvage yard, and uh, they allowed me to come down and take uh, everything out from underneath the hood that I wanted, uh, including the uh, control unit and the fuel pump, all the wiring, the plumbing, everything that I needed, and uh, then they had the engine and the transmission uh, removed by one of their guys and delivered. But uh, the engine had about 38,000 on it when I got it. And uh, the truck's got 455,000 and change on it right now, so I figure I've got at least 290,000 on this engine. Um, it's pretty much stock, except for a few items. I went ahead and uh, made a custom alternator bracket. That's a maximum 100 amp alternator. I made a custom bracket for the bottom, flipped it up, so it's up now high next to the rocker cover for water crossings. The uh, intake hose is off of a 87 stanza wagon. It's got the three inch up front, and uh, I believe it's uh, two and a two and a quarter in the back. The uh, throttle body, uh, I took off a 95 Altima. After doing a little research, uh, Mill and Motorsports wanted an arm and a leg for an enlarged bore throttle body and butterfly. Uh, I started doing a little research, and uh, actually the intake is larger in the back. The throttle body is smaller than the intake. So this Ultima uh, intake is uh, a little over, it's 270 thousandths larger than stock, the, uh, the Butterfly. And uh, it bolts up. It's a bolt up unit. Went ahead and uh, got the uh, TPS, of course it's OBD2 since the, it was a 95 Ultima, 95-98 uses this TPS, so I went ahead and adapted the harness, that was no big deal. And uh, the coolant elbows are epoxied into the aluminum throttle body, so I removed those with the uh, press, uh, flip them 180 degrees so they would uh, line up with the coolant hoses on the uh, 300 and uh, went ahead and got some epoxy and uh, pressed them back in place. That was a done deal. The uh, intake box is off of a 280Z that we had at the shop and I went ahead and uh, cut the snout up, flipped it around and welded the duct back on so it would uh, fit up here with this short hose and uh, keep the air filter up out of the water. Uh, everything out of the car is stock. The truck is smog legal. I even went ahead and uh, went down to Metro and got the emission stickers for an 85 non-turbo. Slapped them on the hood. So the referee wouldn't give me any trouble. But like I said, that was back in 92. This thing's been smogged a half a dozen times since then. Uh, canister, vapor canister, EGR. The uh, relay box off the car is up over there for the ECCS system. The uh, harness comes up over the top. I mounted the control unit up as high as it would go behind the glove box. It's literally up underneath, almost touching the cowling on the inside of the truck and the cab. But it's mounted in four little rubber grommets and a plastic tray like the old 280Z turbo control units were mounted up. So a uh, little vibration. Truck's been running great ever since. I've never had any trouble with it. Um, we used to do a fuel injector flush on these engines. These are carbon magnets behind the intake valves. Sometimes back east when it gets really cold, uh, these will start and stall a half a dozen times before they get enough fuel into the port for the engine to start. Uh, getting that carbon off the back of the intakes can be a tiresome affair. I do not care for carbon blasts myself. Uh, what I like to do is just keep a little tech around in the tank. The uh, 3M injector cleaner that we used to use at the dealership was basically Tecron anyway, so I always put a little Tecron in the tank and this thing's been running. I've replaced four of the six injectors. I'm still running on two of the originals. Uh, haven't broken any exhaust studs yet. The only reason I can think on this guy is because maybe I'm getting a little extra cool air out from underneath the fender wells on this truck. Other than that, they're known for that. Uh, I chose the uh, 300 motor be other than the throttle body for uh, four-wheeling. Uh, sledgehammer twice and once on Santiago's Revenge I've had the truck slipped off a ledge and I had it wedged over on the door. Engine continued to run. The only reason I shut it off was because the oil light came on. 
But uh, as soon as the fourth guy grabbed the bumper, Bubba pulled the truck back over. I started it back up and uh, backed off the ledge, no problem. If it wasn't for keeping the engine and the uh, oil and the uh, the uh, engine oil in the uh, pan, this thing would run upside down. It doesn't care. The uh, camshafts are a little different too. I found out after uh, working at the dealership several years. Uh, the pickup truck Maxima. 200SX and the Pathfinder all use uh, the same intake and uh, exhaust. The 300ZX, uh, the uh, exhaust is the same. The lift on the intake is the same, but there's 12 degrees more duration. That's the only difference. But uh, that little bit seems to help the mid-range. And that Ultima throttle body up there uh, gave this truck gobs of mid-range back. I can uh, take the on-ramps on the freeway now with no problem. You really had to wind this thing up before. It's a heavy truck, but not anymore. Last few years with that Ultima throttle body has been, uh, been a lot of fun driving it. Uh, I made the oil pan myself. I don't know if you can see it. I actually sectioned the bottom flange together, and then the uh, other two portions are from a Maxima and a Pathfinder for the sump. But uh, that's been no problem. Stock 5-speed. And uh, the rest of the truck, well, who cares? This is a VG30 video, right? So let me start it up and see how it sounds.